Hey friends, Richard Rowland at the Jam Space with another channel check-in. I do these to keep myself motivated and focused on the channel, keep you informed about its direction, and to better introduce myself and the Jam Space. This video may also be of interest to anyone considering starting a YouTube channel of their own. Before we get started, don't be shy. Comment, like, and subscribe. Share your thoughts, show your appreciation, Every interaction supports the Jam Space YouTube channel. Subscribe and survey all of my current content at youtube.com slash the Jam Space. Now a quick outline of this video. First up, a three minute history of the Jam Space and why I'm on YouTube. Second, we'll talk YouTube strategy, review my channel goals and learn how they were achieved. Finally, I'll wrap with video content ideas and my new channel goals moving forward. Use the timestamps to jump to the sections that are of interest to you and find artist links for all of these soundtrack songs in the description below. Let's begin. For 10 years, the Jam Space was an in-person music lesson studio and concert venue. In 2009, I moved to the small village of Lemberg as a weary traveling musician. I purchased a neglected century-old merchant's shop, I dove into building renovations and developing my music-based business simultaneously. In the back of my mind, I knew this creative project would make a great YouTube channel, but between renovations, hosting concerts, teaching guitar lessons, and working odd jobs, I didn't have the time and energy to record, edit, and upload videos. There is one from 2013, but that's it. In 2020, the world was hit by the global pandemic and this brought all of the Jam Space's business operations to a halt. I was fortunate to find full-time work with a great local employer and was able to take a step back from the Jam Space and reflect upon a decade of toil. I have great memories of the shows supporting the artistic endeavors of others and it was a true pleasure to guide my students on their musical journey. But I think any entrepreneur will tell you that what appears outwardly as a shining success is most often hard fought behind the scenes. I've come to think of my Jam Space 2010 to 2020 period as a practical work of art. I didn't put out albums, I, I didn't tour, I built and delivered the Jam Space. It was a business and a way of life. But like most works of art, not a relatively profitable venture. The income stream was unsteady, the prospect of concert and music lesson revenue had peaked and was in decline. The music business is tough and being located in a sparsely populated area wasn't helping matters. As 2020 progressed, my steady employment continued and life became a lot simpler. I never forgot my YouTube aspirations. In the absence of financial and business related stress, I now had the mental bandwidth to give it some serious consideration. I realized YouTube offered my business and creative pursuits an opportunity. There's over 2 billion YouTube users seeking information and entertainment. If I can connect with just a tiny fraction of them, then geographic location or the physical size of the jam space no longer limit the potential audience that I can reach. Instead of promoting one-off concerts to a 50-seat capacity or delivering in-person music lessons one student at a time, my content streams worldwide is enjoyed by thousands and can be rewatched as many times as one desires. The concert isn't Friday at 8, your lesson isn't Tuesday at 6. You don't even have to get off the couch. The Jam Space has become an audio video production facility whose content is available whenever and wherever you happen to be. YouTube.com slash the Jam Space, it's that easy. In December of 2020, I uploaded the channel's second video. Nearly seven years had passed since my first upload. Thankfully, this time I kept with it, and by the end of March, 10 videos were published on the Jam Spaces channel. It was about this time I decided to be more intentional with the project. I wrote, This channel preserves the story of building and sharing the Jam Space venue and provides a platform for me to concentrate my creative endeavors in a post pandemic world. I began to analyze other YouTube channels and identified small sized creators with similar content that I could use as a benchmark to gauge the progress of my own channel. Armed with a realistic picture of what other channels had achieved and a better understanding of my own skills and limitations, I began to set mindful goals. In the YouTube vlog number one video, I made my goals public. It didn't matter that there weren't a lot of views on this video. The point was to set my intentions. The simple act of making a declaration created a sense of accountability. 
Another important factor was that the goals weren't open-ended. I gave myself three months to accomplish them. This meant that I couldn't dawdle or put things off. My video output increased accordingly to meet my goals. There were late nights, challenges, setbacks. Still, my video quality improved. My goals were well and good, but regardless of whether or not they were met, it was clear that the time spent pursuing them was making the channel better. So the takeaway for anyone considering a channel is this, spend your first three months just learning and refining your process. This includes filming, editing, and familiarizing yourself with how to upload content and analyze your data in YouTube studio. Setting goals beyond just trying your best can be distracting and overwhelming at this stage. So at the end of your first three months, do a self-evaluation and ask yourself if you want to continue with YouTube. If you do, then set some realistic goals for your channel and give yourself the next three months to achieve them. And don't forget to track your progress. So let's look at how my channel has grown over the first half year. Keep in mind the numbers are small. I'm only about six months into my YouTube career. Important channel stats at the end of my first three months were 10 videos published, 26 subscribers, and 2,200 views. These metrics formed the basis of my goals for the next three months. My objective was to reach a total of 25 published videos, 100 subscribers, and 10,000 views by the end of a three-month deadline. The final results were 25 published videos, 125 subscribers, 12.5 thousand total video views, and the channel had amassed 792 watch time hours. But how did I reach my goals? Well, there were a handful of videos that significantly outperformed the rest. My top eight performing videos achieved between 500 to 3,000 views each, successful for a new channel. They were responsible for nearly 90% of total views and 82% of total channel subscribers. Half of these successful videos were published early in the channel's history. While slow to grow, they eventually gained traction and rack up regular views to this day, meeting the basic definition of evergreen content. They possess an almost timeless value. My top four evergreen videos were all about guitar-related accessories. They accounted for 40.6% of total channel views and 20% of total channel subscribers. The four remaining successful videos came recently as I followed the release of the M1 iPad Pro. Videos quickly climbed into the hundreds and thousands. Now, established channels expect these results, but for a beginner, the sudden success of these videos felt almost viral. My top four iPad Pro videos represented 49% of total channel views and a whopping 61.6% .6 of total channel subscribers. Reviewing my top eight videos, the guitar related content is evergreen and the iPad content was viral, but they're both product reviews. Really, the products were the draw. Videos were found by viewers doing user searches or receiving YouTube suggestions. Channel subscriptions gained from these viewers represents a measure of approval and trust in my future content. You can bet there will be more guitar gear and iPad Pro content in this channel's future. The remaining 17 videos only accounted for 10.3% of total views and 8.8% of total subscribers. That works out to an average of 76 views or 0.65 of a subscriber. While disappointing, these are fairly typical results for a new content creator. In the early days, you haven't built a following and the YouTube algorithm doesn't really know if anyone's gonna like your original material. So at this stage, making content that doesn't follow current trends or search well, like a product review, for example, can be a bit of a crapshoot. Examples of my content that didn't find a wider audience include the Rescue My Rig series where I introduce my guitar gear and make improvements to my live performance rig, footage from past Jam Space concerts in the Live Music Memories playlist, two videos of original songs recorded here at the Jam Space, three guitar lessons, and channel updates like this and more.
With the analysis of the channel's first six months concluded, I want to focus on my plans for the channel moving forward. Obviously, I'll stick with what's working. The channel has gained traction with guitar-related product reviews and iPad Pro content. I'm happy to continue contributing in those spaces, and given my success with this type of content, I may expand the scope of my reviews to include any product where I have a passion and a valuable perspective to share. Now, despite low initial viewership in other video categories, I'm not going to turn away from artistic pursuits and continued channel experimentation. As a musician and an arts advocate, my foray into YouTube videography feels revolutionary when it comes to connecting with an audience of like-minded individuals. I'm an artist by nature, and to reach my full potential, I need to be free to explore the space. Having a YouTube channel to share original music, showcase other artists, spread knowledge and experience with guitar lessons and life stories encompasses all of my goals for the original brick and mortar jam space. While operating a YouTube channel is a vastly different medium than a live concert venue, I'm confident that I can accomplish all of the same objectives and much more by focusing on this video format. Not to mention I've re-entered the workforce full-time and the flexibility of creating videos provides a much better work-life balance. With this in mind, I want to lay out some channel goals for the next six months. It's my hope to reach or surpass the following content thresholds. 50 plus total videos uploaded to the channel, 500 plus total channel subscribers, 50,000 plus total channel video views, and 3,000 plus total channel watch time hours. Ultimately, I aim to surpass all of these goals, but I've decided to grade my results in the event that some of them are not fully met. Any result that is less than 50% of my stated goal will receive a grade of F. 80 to 89% receives an A, and of course, 90 to 100% is an A+. Plus. This takes into account the only goal that is 100% within my control is total videos uploaded. Total subscribers, video views, and watch time hours will grow as I continue to upload, but the rate at which this happens is variable. If you're still watching, I want to thank you for sticking with me. I'd love it if you would subscribe. Help me reach 500 plus subscribers. Comment below with video ideas. Leave a like and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for sharing part of it with me. Signing off, this is Richard Roland here at the Jam Space. I will see you in the next one.